So welcome to our first virtual um, The New IT Girls Meetup. Uh, my name is Astrid and I'm really happy that you all joined today. Um, I will do a short introduction um, about um, The New IT Girls, who we are, what our mission is, and then we will directly start um, with the most important part, um, presenting our virtual meetup sponsor um, today, which is Fiscally. Um, I'm really curious about their introduction. They will tell us a bit more about Fiscally, what they're doing um, and why they're interested in supporting women in IT. And we will then have our talk from Elpida, who will tell us more about how we can find our dream job um, in IT from our couch, which is super helpful because I spend a lot of time there at the moment. <laughs> So who are we um, the New IT Girls? Um, we are uh, a network of women in IT who want to strengthen each other and really connect women in the IT industry across Austria and beyond the borders to help each other, support each other and really strengthen each other. Um, we work across job titles, so it's not important that you are a studied IT or anything. We really um, have uh, women from all different backgrounds, from sales, software development, HR, marketing, and much more. And this is also our mission. We really want to encourage more women to follow a career in tech and also show the diversity of the, this field because a lot of people still associate IT automatically with software development, coding and so on. And the new IT girls really wants to show that it's much more than this. And there are a lot of different fields that you can actually follow if you follow a, a career in tech. Why did we found the new IT girls? Um, the reason was that uh, many times um, I was the only woman at an event in the IT industry, um, or maybe we had a second woman. And um, Doris, my co-founder, and I one day said, well, it, it's just not possible that there are no women in IT. Um, and we actually started to look for a network that connects women in IT um, that goes beyond just coding. And we couldn't really find anything. So we thought, OK, well, if there is nothing that um, suits um, our um, goals, then we simply have to create our own network. And this is why we founded the New IT Girls early um, last year. And it's really amazing to see how many people already joined and how we can really change something and connect each other. Um, talking about each other, um, it's really important for us that this is not a community from us for you, but it's really a community from the community for the community. So we're always looking for um, interesting talks, topics that you want to share. And we know that each one of us has a lot of experience, has their own story, their own best practices, tools that you're using that you find super helpful. And we really want to learn from you that you share your learnings, your best practices with the community so that we so that we can all benefit from each other and learn from each other. So if you're interested to um, talk at one of our next uh, the new IT girls meetups, then simply go to the link that you see on the screen now or write me on LinkedIn or wherever. And we would be really happy if you could be the next IT girl talking um, one of our virtual or in-person meetups once this is over. Also, if you're interested in becoming an event sponsor, um, just write us an email, send us an email, um, tell us why you would like to support women in IT, and we are happy to connect as well. Um, I just saw someone writing. I don't see any slides. Um, anyone else not seeing any slides? Or does it work for you? <laughs> no, it works, I think. We 
will um, okay. We will anyway um, also um, provide the slides afterwards. So maybe Athmia, if you could just try to rejoin as well. As we said, reboot always works with Microsoft technology. Um, okay. Maybe it would be super great. Um, well, there you also see our um, links where you can find us. I hope that uh, a lot of you are already members of our LinkedIn group. Obviously, you all found the meetup um, group already because you have the link. And you can also check out our website to find um, news about the new IT girls and all the relevant links. And now I would have a question if we could all maybe turn on our camera for a second to do at least a virtual photo. We always take a selfie um, at each meetup, which is difficult obviously now, but it would be really cool if we could quickly turn on the video and at least um, maybe some of you can do a screenshot so that we have a lot of faces um, still showing up. Yay, I see the first ones joining. <laughs> All right. Anyone else? Yay, more faces. <laughs> So I think if you could, whoever just wants to take screenshots, I will also take a screenshot so that we have different faces showing up. That would be really cool. So everyone smile. <laughs> oh yeah, that looks really stupid now. <laughs> At least I do. <laughs> I will try again. OK, I guess it doesn't get any better, but I hope you took some screenshots as well so that we have a collection of different views at least and not just my face. All right, um, then I'm happy to hand over to our event sponsor of today. Um, and I saw that Galinda already turned on her video, which is really nice. So maybe, um, first of all, thanks a lot for being our virtual meetup sponsor for today. Um, I'm really curious what you will tell us about fiscally, about um, your story maybe as well, and why you want to support women in tech. And Kalinda, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Astrid. Uh, I, but I do seem to have a difficulty uh, sharing my slides. It tells me I can only uh, share if I'm an organizer or a presenter. Since I'm a presenter, I would like to share. <laughs> Maybe you can give me a hand. Yep, I will make your presenter. Perfect. Yes. Mm, should work um, in a second. Maybe if you try. Mm. Hold on. Yeah, it seems to be working now. So, da -da -da -da. does Looking it work? Good. Looking you good. My, you see my slide? For me, but yes, now we see it. Perfect. Okay, good. So, yeah, thanks again, Astrid, and thank you for the introduction. Also a warm hello from me to you all. I hope you are all well and healthy in this difficult time. And I would also like to apologize in advance for I will probably not be able to attend the whole meetup since my two and a half year old is with me at the moment and will most likely demand some attention at some point. So if you want to, want to contact me directly, after this meetup is over, you can send me an email. Uh, the email address is written here. It's kalinde at fiscally.com. And I'm happy to answer any questions that might arise. So who is Fiscally? Fiscally is a team of technical and financial experts. And together we work on innovative and cloud-based solutions for the fiscalization of business cases. Our management team consists of these very nice guys. Simon Dragacznik and Patrick Gaubert founded the predecessor company of Fiscally 
namely the code workshop in 2015. And in 2019, Johannes Ferner joined as our CEO. A short overview of what has happened in our company so far. Fiscally, as already mentioned, and still under the name Code Werkstatt, started out in Austria in 2015 and uh, managed to provide the first fully operational implementation of the RKSV, which is the Austrian regulation for the fiscalization of cash registers in 2016. The mobile cash register Obono, which was the first project on the topic of fiscalization, is still available today. And among other benefits, it can be used completely paperless, which is, in our opinion, not only convenient, but also a significant contribution to the conservation of valuable resources. In 2018, it was clear that our next target should be Germany, where the Kassen sich fau. The German regulation for the fiscalization of cash registers has been implemented on uh, January the 1st of this year. The code Werkstatt changed to the Fiscally GmbH in 2019, and that's when we also founded the Fiscally Germany GmbH. At the moment, our main focus is based um, on the... No, our main focus is on solving um, the... German Kassensichtbau, for which we want to provide a cloud-based solution, and we are putting all our effort into our product being certified by the BSI, the German Federal Office for Information Security. And for the future, our vision is to be able to offer a single API for fiscalization throughout Europe. At the moment, all countries solve fiscalization differently, and what we want to provide is a single and unified API. Okay, so once more, our project fiscally solves the Austrian archives file. We offer a cloud-based solution for the German person's file, and Obono is our mobile cash register. Now, before I tell you more about fiscalization, I would like to introduce you to our very fast-growing team. When I joined back in late 2018, we were only four employees total, if I remember correctly. And as, as you can see, our team has grown quite a bit since, and we are also not planning to stop growing anytime soon. So everyone who's interested, you're very welcome. I've now mentioned fiscalization a few times without saying what it actually means. So let me let me uh, tell you a bit about a, a bit about what it is and why it is important. The aim of fiscalization is to record all transactions of cash cash registers without gaps to protect data from manipulation and to archive it. This demand is usually made by tax offices and in order to obtain a complete settlement of sales tax. The Kassen sich in Germany also is intended to protect against manipulation of basic digital records in companies. It regulates the technical requirements for electronic recording and security systems, such as cash register systems. And since January, all cash registers, record accounting, security and recording systems must be ready for a TSS or a technical security system. You now might ask yourself, or at least that's what I did when I had no clue about fiscalization or TSS and the like, what, what does this all mean? How, how can I imagine it? So simply put, you can think of the TSS as a large box with two other boxes inside of it, which are the SMA, the secure module application, and CSP, the crypto service provider. The cash register sends the data to the TSS. It is, so to speak, the gatekeeper uh, that decides what data is allowed in and who gets access. The TSS then forwards the data to the SMA, and its task is to ensure that nothing can go wrong during the security operation and that nothing can be manipulated during the communication operation. In the end, the CSP generates the signature and sends it back to the SMA. The SMA merges the signature with the original data, and when the process is complete, all of, his, all of it is stored in memory. Now to solve the Kassen sich V, we provide a cloud-based solution for securing individual recordings against manipulation called Fiscally Sign. 
and after the certification by the BSI, fiscally sign will correspond to a TSS according to the Kassel Sichv. The fiscally sign API is a RESTful API. It's a platform independent software only solution that is completely free, free of any additional hardware dongles and a working internet connection is basically the only technical requirement for integrating our solution. So um, very important for our customers. What are the advantages to our software? With our solution, they are well prepared for all the new legal requirements. It can be easily integrated into existing systems and has already included the required TSS. Yeah, so first of all, our cloud-based solution is simple. The uncomplicated data exchange saves time and nerves. It is safe. The TSS is already integrated. It is legally compliant due to the CC certification of the technical security system and its cryptographic components. Our customer's recording system will be equipped with temporary resistant protection. And last but not least, it is affordable since it does not require, require expensive hardware investment or fee management. You can find more information uh, about our company at fiscally.com. More information about legal requirements at kassensichfall.net and our page for developers, which is probably most interesting to all of you if you are in the field of developing. <laughs> it is developer.fiscally.com where you can find our different APIs, documentation and the like. Okay, and since this is uh, the new IT girls meet up, I will once more get back to our team, or to be exact, only a part of our team and a matter I personally hold very dear, namely the proportion of women in our company. So for now, 25% of the company's workforce is female and our IT department in particular does have some catching up to do on that front. So this is really the reason why I specifically searched for groups that connect women in the IT sector. And I'm very happy that I found you um, and you, uh, that you provide a platform where I could uh, present fiscally to a large number of women. And I'm also especially pleased that the first meetup which I was able to introduce, uh, where I was able to introduce fiscally was organized by you. And I hope that I was able to give you a short overview of our company and what we do. So if some of you are interested in our fiscalization topic, in fact, I hope many of you are, um, and would like to become part of our fiscally family, we do have a few vacancies to fill. Just go to fiscally.com slash jobs, where you can find uh, the current job offers. I hope I will be able to arrange many interviews soon, which will, of course, be held via video call. Um, since the beginning of this pandemic, we do all our interviews remotely. And we not only do interviews, but in fact, we were able to onboard five new employees completely online since the beginning wow. of this uh, parallel universe. So, yeah, that's it from my end. Thank you very much. Stay healthy. And I may now return to Astrid. Thank you. Thank you, Gelinde. Also, if um, anyone has questions, um, I think you can write them in the chat or speak up, whatever you prefer. Maybe we can um, do the Q&A also later, depending on, on how long you can be in the call. But um, one important remark, um, so that I do not forget before I hand over to our speaker for today, um, please feel free to um, connect with each other on LinkedIn as well. I think um, this is also one important topic and El Peter will talk also about LinkedIn uh, in a second. Um, but please um, don't forget um, that um, we can all learn from each other, maybe posting interesting posts about interesting topics. So feel free to connect with um, at least me and I hope all the other IT girls, um, because if you join our network, then I hope that you are also ready to network with each other um, in real life, so to say, or at least outside of our 
um, meetups as well, which would be really great. But now um, I want to introduce you to Elpida, who is our speaker for today and who will speak about um, how to build your network and get your dream job in IT from your couch. Um, I saw some insights already, but I'm really curious what you will show us today, Elpida, and I would say the floor is yours. Thank you, Astrid. Thank you for the nice uh, intro and uh, welcome everyone. I will uh, share my screen now and I will share with you a few tips. And if any questions uh, rise up, you can always uh, interrupt me. So. Also, if you do not want to speak up, um, you can also post them and I can share them with Elpida while she is sharing her screen. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yes. Thank you. So, hi everyone and welcome. My name is Elpida Bandra and uh, in the last year I have changed three roles in IT and I have moved from Ireland to Austria. To do that, I had to work a lot on my IT skills, my soft skills, build my network, build my CV and talk with many hiring managers in the industry. Today, I feel very comfortable with the whole process of job hunting and I will share with you what I have learned from my experience and things that will help you to get your dream job in IT. First of all, the most difficult part of uh, job searching is the beginning. Hence, finding your dream job and reaching to the point that they will call you for an interview. After that, you have to get ready for the interview, of course, and you have almost hit your target. Since if someone calls you for an interview, it means that they are interested in you. So today we will see all the different things that you can do so you receive an interview call from your dream job. And guess what? You can do all of these things from your couch. So let's get started. So today we will talk about brand building, job hunting resources, LinkedIn, CV, and cover letter. Now, when you search for a job, first of all, put yourself in the position of an expensive product. You are not going to work for free and you are not desperate to get something. You are a talent in an area that lacks talents. And since a company advertises an open position, it means that they need to hire someone and that, that, and that someone will help them to develop their business. Now, every product has a brand and when you buy something, you take under consideration a few factors, such as how much do you need it, its quality, its price, how easy is it to get used to it, how easy is it to combine it with other products? How much information can you find about it? And what others say about it? So you are the product and you want to look as expensive and desirable as possible. Which tools do you think that you have to achieve this? What can you take care of to improve your professional image? For example, in the interview phase, you have to go dressed up properly. But what can you do to improve your digital professional image so they will call you for an interview? I will tell you what I did. First of all, I have to share with you that I'm not the best programmer. And even though most people think that only coding skills or mathematics are what lands you your dream job in IT, they are simply wrong. I do not know if this happens to other areas too, but in IT it is impossible to know everything and about everything. So hiring managers, especially when you have no working experience, really focus on your soft skills. They love it if you see that you are flexible, willing to learn, being able to work alone, but also collaborate with others, multitask, and work with different technologies, which is overwhelming and demand you to perform well out of your comfort zone. Be polite, be diplomatic, 
being able to do research, work under deadlines, and understand that technology changes fast. So you have to be able to keep up and learn new things, study, do research, try, fail, and finally, find your way around different problems. How do you show that you have skills like this? Through your digital image, through your digital brand. Now, do not simply say that I am comfortable out of my comfort zone. Show it by referring to that time that you started an online course because you were technologically curious or the time that you moved to another city to study or to the different jobs that you have worked at. Do not simply say that I am a team player. Instead of that, you can write in your CV about an open project collaboration that you did or an interesting project at the university where you worked in a team. I built a YouTube channel with educational content and I wrote two books that I self-published in Amazon. Someone else could have a blog talking about technology or a related hobby that shows that they are interested in technology. Every related activity is part of your brand and you have to be able to show it. Another tool to use is GitHub. GitHub is an online service where you can collaborate with others, see others' projects and build your own for free if you are developers. Even small contributions such as a few exercises per year show that you are aware of this technology and you enjoy learning in your spare time. So my advice here is to be technologically active and then demonstrate your strengths through your activities. If you do not do anything, you will have nothing to say in an interview. But if you get involved and be vocal about your achievements, you build an interesting brand. Of course, your LinkedIn and your CV are your two most powerful marketing tools and we will see later what can you do to make them more interesting. Lastly, when you build your brand, make sure that when someone Googles you, they will see what you want. Google your name and set your social media accounts accordingly. For example, you do not want a hiring manager to be able to see you in a bathing suit in your Facebook photos. When searching for a job, you should use all your sources in order to reach your target. Friends and people that, are, that you are connected through your social media can bring you one step closer to it. Imagine now that from a stack of CVs that arrive to a hiring manager's desk, the one that comes with a reference by one of his or her colleagues is placed on the top of this task. So the first thing to do when you are searching for a job is to let your network know. Ask your friends for any open positions in their companies and try to connect with people that work in the company that you want to apply to. One more way to go here is to talk to recruiters. Recruiters are specialists in finding people who are potential fits to a role. As an applicant, you do not pay anything to them. You only share your details and CV. You can find them by searching for recruiting agencies specialized in the field that you are interested in. Usually you search for local agencies because they have contacts in the city. But there is also a chance that a recruiter has also connections to another city. In IT specifically, there is the option of working from home. So even if a recruiter from another location contacts you and you do not wish to move in, just ask them if there is a chance of remote work or if they have anything else in your desired location. The simplest way to connect with them is to Google for recruiting agencies in your area and send them an email with your CV. Make sure that you are talking to them like you would talk to a hiring manager. And remember that you are in the same team. 
as if you sign a contract, the recruiter will get paid by the hiring company. The last thing about recruiters or headhunters is that they hold positions that might have not been advertised. This happens all the time and it is because a recruiter will send only a good match to the hiring company, so they will waste less time in interviews. Another way to approach recruiters and hiring managers is through LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the number one professional tool for networking. Make sure that you keep it updated, well informed and add to your network people that are related to your profession. In a few weeks, I went from 500 people to 10,000 people in my network by simply adding people who had an interesting profile. You can check out others' profile and build your own. You can add your CV there. You can find open positions. You can apply to them and connect to the HR people or the hiring managers that published the position. You can find recruiters, headhunters, or possibly future colleagues and ask them for details about the company. The most important thing here is to understand that you have to be professional and talk politely, but there is no reason to be shy and afraid of talking to them. The whole point of LinkedIn is to build your network and talk to people in the industry. Now, people that make it really easy for others to get hired are the ones who will be called for the interview. It is your job to put yourselves out there so recruiters and hiring managers will see you. Go to your LinkedIn profile and spend a lot of time in settings. Choose to let recruiters know that you are open to opportunities and set job alerts to receive notifications for interesting openings. If you already work somewhere, LinkedIn will not allow recruiters from your current company to see that you are open to new opportunities. Only recruiters from other companies can see that, so don't worry. There is the option of activating premium for free for one month. I absolutely recommend this. If you activate it, your profile is advertised two times more to recruiters. And when you see a role, you can also see a few statistics about it, such as if you are in the top applicants. LinkedIn measures your match to a role by simply measuring how many of the desired for the role skills do you have in your profile? Job hunting is a skill for a lifetime, and it will not only help you in growing your career, but also understand better your field, learn from others, and be part of a broader community. So even after finding a job or, take, or talking to a recruiter that it did not work out, be professionals and let the door open to future collaborations. Now, let's see all of these things in LinkedIn. The first thing to have in your profile is a professional picture. After this, you can write a few things about yourself, your current position, and which are your passions and skills. If you don't have a job, you can write that you are searching for a position in IT and that you are open for new opportunities. Then you can have at featured a few important moments for you. For I, for example, have my two books and my YouTube channel. And then you can uh, also write um, articles, posts in uh, LinkedIn. So it shows that you are active in your community. Then you can write your experience. Here you have the space to write your experience with a lot of details. Write any working experience. For example, I have worked to my parents' restaurant for two years while I was studying and doing my internship. And I have it here. I was afraid initially to add it in my profile since it was not related to IT. But then a hiring manager from one of the top four consulting firms 
told me that I should, since it shows multitasking skills and experience in handling, in handling customers. You can add your studies, your dissertations, related courses, and the IT skills that you have. Your CV should be brief, usually one page, especially if you don't have much experience. But your LinkedIn profile can have a lot of details. Now, you can always expand your network by adding people in the beginning. Find related uh, articles or posts or companies that you are interested in. You can always simply add people. Don't be afraid to do that because everyone knows that uh, the reason that you have LinkedIn is for networking. Let's see now the privacy uh, and settings section. Here, settings and privacy. Here you can uh, open your profile to recruiters. In the job seeking preferences, you can let recruiters know that you are open to opportunities by setting this to yes. And make sure in communications that you are uh, open to any accounts in LinkedIn. So people can uh, reach you out. Another interesting section is the section jobs. In here you can do three things. Firstly, you can search for a job. Let's say that I want to find a position for an analyst in Vienna. But now I can see all of these different uh, openings and I, and I can apply. You can see what they ask for a role and you can change your skills in your profile accordingly in order to uh, approach a job description. Usually you can see here the um, contact person so you can send them directly an email and if you have continue, you are allowed to see a few more uh, statistics for the role and um, for example send directly an email to the contact person even if you are not uh, connected to them. Another thing to do here is to set a job alert. So by here I can set this uh, job description analyst in Vienna as an alert and I can receive uh, openings daily. And the last thing to do is that uh, LinkedIn, based on your profile, uh, can suggest a few open roles to you. So you can uh, see here what other roles fit your profile and apply directly to it. So we saw what we can do in order to expand our network and find new opportunities. Let's see now a few more tips on how we can increase our possibilities of being called for an interview. Firstly, understand that you do not have to fulfill all the requirements to apply to a role. More people, especially women, are afraid to apply if they do not have all the desired skills and they are afraid of being rejected. I want you to put in your mind that being rejected from a role, it does not mean that you are not good. It only means that you are not a good fit for the specific job at the specific time. I remember when my application to have a tour at Google's headquarters at Dublin was rejected, and I thought that it does not even make sense to apply there. Well, two years later, a recruiter from Google contacted me for an interview. But guess who was not interested anymore? Now, how can we shift a CV that does 
that does not receive any calls for interview to one that, that does receive. Find a tool and start building a fancy CV. I used Canva. You can use whatever you like. Spend time on it. Make sure that it is easy to read. It is clear from the dates and the content what you have done. Do not write about characteristics such as I am a fast learner. Show it through your projects. You have to be flexible and smart here. Do online courses and projects in GitHub to show that you have skills in IT. Never lie to your CV, but adapt it and highlight the skills that are more important for a particular job. I change my CV every time I apply to a job, even its color palette. I bring it closer to the companies that I apply to. Write a brief email that says in two paragraphs, why do you apply and why do you think that you fit with the role and send it along with your CV. Even if it is not required and you apply to a position through LinkedIn or another job advertising page, finding the person who has advertised the job and sending them an email really shows that you did your research and you are truly interested in the position. Have a look at the company's page. What products do they have? Which technologies are they working with? And show to them that you are not a one of the many. You only want to work for them. No one wants to be one out of the many, neither you or them. So make sure that you adapt your CV to what they ask you for and not to what you want to show. Lastly, you have to be patient and know that it is a matter of time and hard work. Finding a job is a job and you should know that. Especially if you have no working experience, you have to work on job interview skills, do online courses and build projects to add more things in your CV and increase your confidence. It can be challenging and a mental marathon. But remember, you search for a nice company and they search for a talent. And it is only a matter of time that you will find it, as especially in IT, there is a big demand. Thank you for listening. Astrid, back to you. Yes, I just need to unmute myself. Can you hear me already? No. I can hear you. Ah, perfect. Um, I thought that there, uh, so first of all, thank you very much for um, the tips and tricks. I took a lot of notes actually while you were talking. Um, I, I mean, obviously anyone can speak up if you have uh, questions. We also had some discussions ongoing in the chat uh, while you were speaking, um, so you can read through. Um, one question that came up and that I also asked myself because you mentioned um, adding people on LinkedIn. Um, first of all, uh, one question, do you accept um, random requests from headhunters or someone wrote weird people <laughs> just to um, get a bigger network or do you really try to find the, the right contacts as well? Uh, first of all, LinkedIn is not Facebook. I mean, most of people at least should understand that it's a tool for your professional image or for your company. So that's why you have to be professional there. You have to have a professional uh, picture. And if you uh, are professional, you will attract the right people. Um, we should remove this shyness. Uh, I don't know this person. Why did I add it? It's very clear that I uh, add someone in LinkedIn because I'm interested either in their business or in uh, their profile. For example, I'm uh, very interested in uh, CEOs and CTOs, 
uh, because I um, I find that it's very difficult to um, build the skill set required to become a CTO. And I try to uh, approach them for advices and understand what they did through their posts and through their background in order to reach there. Uh, you can always send a brief note uh, when you add someone. And maybe in the beginning uh, that you don't have many mutual friends, it's a little bit strange because um, you can't add many people in LinkedIn and um, you, you don't see any mutual friends, but you can see very fast that uh, by adding a few people, you start uh, being familiar with the specialists in your area. So there are uh, many people out there who try to do networking, mm -hmm. and of course there are uh, the strange uh, people, but you can always uh, remove your, them from uh, your profile. So. Um, I just saw uh, Christina, you want to add something. Please feel free to speak up. If that works. We cannot yet hear you. Or maybe it's just me. In case it doesn't work, you can also write it, of course, and I can read it, but it would be much better if you could. It's now working? Yes, now it works. Oh, okay. I have <laughs> some troubles today. Hi. So, uh, th thanks a lot, Peter, for your uh, a nice workshop. Um, I just wanted to, um, since I'm from a, a marketing communication perspective and uh, special specialization was on LinkedIn, I just wanted to add something because I think um, you have to make a difference between either uh, you like full time li really um, job seeking or do you want to build uh, your personal brand because mm -hmm. um, some tips apply to both uh, strategies and, and, and some kind of don't um, don't add uh, to each other like f for example when building a network mm, I'm, I'm full here with you um, um you don't have to be shy um, um you 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 have to approach people you don't know before and and build it but um especially if you're building like um for personal branding um you should not at everybody, but people, uh, people like um, in your target group, like in in your professional target group. So so um, because if you add everybody, um, and for example, it lowers the reach in in LinkedIn, yeah, and it has some uh, um, severe uh, um, um, on and when you do postings and and stuff like this. But like um, for example, like um, if you're job seeking, skill sets are very important, but they don't uh, um, they're not important at all if you do like on personal branding because then you would have recommendations and stuff like this every six months. Uh, so so I think um. Mm, what I wanted to say is um, there are really good tips, but um, it always depends what strategy uh, um, you do. So you can't say this one is always right for everything or, or mm. this one uh, not. So so um, just just to be <laughs> sure there. Yeah, uh, Christina, I completely uh, agree. Maybe I didn't make it uh, clear. I meant people in IT. Um, in general, that maybe are not directly um, in your inner circle, not other, I don't add only data scientists like me, but I will add also recruiters, HR people in IT companies, CEOs, CTOs, managers, uh, team leaders, uh, people who are uh, doing interesting uh, workshops uh, like this one, or uh, in the broader community of uh, IT. Of course, you have a, lim a limit also in a LinkedIn, I think, till 50,000 people. So you can't. 30. It's, uh, it's 30, but uh, yeah, you have to get down somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't really um, have a very broad um, a circle. Absolutely, you have to stay uh, closer to your uh, profession. And um, one question that came up because you mentioned, for example, you try to add CTOs or COOs. 
Are you um, adding any note, um, like any message when you send a request? And if yes, what do you write there? Uh, usually when I add uh, people uh, like uh, CTOs that I want to learn from their uh, background, no, I'm not really opening a conversation. But when I apply for a job, and uh, because sometimes you can apply for a role online, but also see the uh, person, the contact person. So then I follow up with a small note. I add them in uh, LinkedIn and I send a small note that, hey, I have applied to this position. I would like to uh, connect with you in order to talk more about uh, the role or any other uh, opportunities uh, in your company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Linda, um, you are also responsible for HR at Fiscally. Maybe what is your advice? When do you usually react to people adding you on LinkedIn? Would be interesting to see from an HR perspective um, as well. OK, so um, maybe my my position is a bit unique since I'm not a full time employee. So so there is the one obstacle that I not always uh, have the possibility to react um, at any time, uh, really. But I do want to get back to um, uh, applicants as soon as possible and to um, make a first connection. Um, ASAP, really, because um, there are so many good people out there, and we wanna we wanna include them in our team. But do you also accept um, random requests from people you don't know because you think maybe they could Me personally? be interesting? Yeah, personally. Uh, for, hmm. I mean. Uh, I think there was uh, before there was uh, the expression weird people and that has happened to me before and I don't accept those Yeah. Uh, because, yeah, as Elpida uh, pointed out, it's not Facebook. I mean, I don't accept those on Facebook either, um, but it does have to uh, at least um, on, on the on the on the margins have to do with what I do professionally because it is really um, a place to 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 hook up people that uh, mm. do have a common um, professional background. Yeah, and. and it's important also to have an updated uh, profile. I mean, if uh, you um, receive a, a, a notification from a person who has no photo or no um, background uh, information, it's harder to trust them. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. it's the same like yeah, on a, also, a also normal event. I think it's the same like on a normal event where you're present. You won't go to somebody and slap your, uh, uh, um, your, your business card in his face and turn around and go. You, you, you will come up to them and talk with them and then exchange. So, so I, um, that's the, the least I expect if, if, like, if I get a, a message uh, um, that um, describes why we would, would uh, um, get in contact. Yeah, and I think LinkedIn does provide uh, the possibility to at least send a short message to the person you want to connect to. So you should definitely make use of that. I mean, it's uh, difficult since it's really only only a few um, uh, letters that uh, only a small number of letters you can you can type in. Uh, but still, uh, at least to to give a hint of of who you are and why you want to uh, to get in touch. Unfortunately, helpful, not always. Yeah. Mm? And unfortunately, really? yeah, not always because there is a bug in it. For example, if, if we uh, to connect, then I have uh, um, 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 there's a, a proposition of some people, you know, um, and industry leaders uh, we, we could connect as well. And if you um, mm -hmm. click there, connect, it automatically sends a, um, a, yeah. um, a connection uh, without uh, any chance to write something. So you should always like open that in a new tab and, and go to the profile and, and then uh, connect 
impact over this. So there are some bugs uh, where that could happen, but uh, um, then you, if you have premium, you you would send an email afterwards, or yeah. if you you could cancel the rec um, and and wait for the uh, time and and do it again, yeah. Because I think it would be really impolite without any <laughs> any note, yeah. But it's uh, I think it's a bug. It's and also on my mobile phone, um, it's like that. Like when I go to a network on uh, on LinkedIn on my mobile phone, and then it also recommends people you might know. For example, for me because I work at Microsoft, other people working at Microsoft, and if I click connect, it just sends the the connect request, which is more okay, I would say, if we have at least something in common, like both working at Microsoft, then I guess the person would accept it anyway, because they think, okay, I might have met her somewhere. Um, but yeah, I agree that if, if you have, don't have any connection, it, it might be weird. And also another question, please, to the other attendees, if you have any questions, either speak up or maybe just send a short comment that you would have a question would like to speak up. Um, I think that would help so that we don't interrupt each other. Um, I had some requests in the past, for example, that um, wrote something like, hi Astrid, I saw your profile and it looks really interesting. I'm also interested in this and this topic. Uh, would you like to connect and exchange about this? And I thought, OK, I looked at the profile and looked quite OK, let's say. So I accepted it. Now my question, do you then answer the person every time someone sends you a note with a, um, with a request? Or do you just accept the person and wait if they reach out again or? Um, from my experience, it depends who has added, who, who has started the conversation. Uh, I wouldn't insist in sending someone messages who does not reply to me. So if, mm -hmm. I, if I have opened the conversation, I would uh, um, leave it open till they will answer to me. But uh, usually when I send a message uh, to someone and um, I ask about their background and um, maybe some um, tips in IT or what I can do, I see people that they, they are very eager to um, answer and help in general. So uh, I think it's a good approach to either ask someone for their background, they are happy to answer um, questions about it, or to um, approach with your CV and a nice uh, cover letter, um, HR people or uh, recruiters in order to find out more about the company. And you can show your interest that way. You you don't have to start bombing them with uh, emails. Yeah. Uh, just one um, brief uh, text shows your um, intention to connect. OK. And um, you also mentioned LinkedIn Premium, for example. Um, do you use um, things like Sales Navigator as well? And do you have experience with emails? Um, I think with uh, LinkedIn uh, Premium, you can send three emails for free per month. Um, I, I wish uh, there were more um, because I found it very helpful. Because sometimes you uh, see the email of the um, contact person in a job ad, but sometimes you can't see it and it's very um, restricted characters wise what you can send uh, through LinkedIn if you are not connected to the other person. But uh, with LinkedIn, I was with premium, I was also able to um, see statistics about the role. For example, that I am in the top 25 applicants for this uh, position. Uh, okay. Things like this that encourage me to um, apply and I saw that um, if you have premium, your profile is advertised more, two times more to recruiters. So this means okay. that they um, see your profile more and more people will contact you for a role. 
Well, I don't okay. think they have to lose anything to do it. Interesting. Um, Susanna wrote, I'm a fan of LinkedIn learning. Yes, um, me too. But to be honest, I have to sometimes t take too little time um, to learn new things. <laughs> uh, but also, for example, for the next phase of the interview, um, you can go in the jobs, I think, section, and there are uh, courses for free like interview preparation that can really help because they are built from people in the industry they know how to prepare you they are for free and you can uh, use them in order to get ready okay that's interesting um how do you keep track or do you keep track at all where you know people from um where? Um, because um, I sometimes I'm on at a, an event or we have a, a the new IT girls meet up and there are a lot of people and I talk to a lot of people and then sometimes they just send me a LinkedIn request without any message and I add them but to be honest like three months later I might not really remember why I know where I know them from um, so what I try to do now is every time someone adds me, if the person didn't add any message, that I would write them immediately and say like, oh, hi, Elpida, it was really nice meeting you at the New Tigers uh, meetup on the 8th of May. More for me as a reminder so that if the person writes me again in the future, that I can see my message and see, ah, OK, this is where I know this person from. Do you also do that or is it just in my head? <laughs> I didn't so far, but uh, it uh, sounds really smart. So maybe I should uh, start doing this. Uh, I usually write something um, like uh, I have uh, applied for this position because I usually add the uh, HR people or uh, recruiters. So uh, from uh, this uh, short message, I remember what was uh, the company and how we were uh, connected. Uh, but uh, in general, I am not uh, keeping track of my contacts. Okay. Um, someone asked, when applying for Dev or DevOps jobs, how important do you think are public repos on GitLab or GitHub compared to stuff like a well-networked LinkedIn profile? Do you have any inputs on that? Um, So there are many skills that you uh, need to have in this uh, job and it depends on how close you are to the customers. So if you are in a role in IT that you a more senior ro role that you are closer to the customers, um, you should have um, good interpersonal skills and communication skills. So there, a LinkedIn uh, uh, profile updated and a, a nice network would help. But uh, in DevOps, um, definitely GitLab or GitHub are uh, two services that are very popular and show that not only you understand technology, but you, you also understand that um, you take a lot of things from uh, uh, online, you learn from open sources, you have the ability to collaborate with others. You have the ability to, to share your code. And uh, these, um, these things show a lot for your, uh, about your character. So that you are able to collaborate in a team. So that you are able to keep documentation. To keep your um, code project ID. Uh, store them somewhere. So I would definitely uh, recommend a very updated GitHub if you start with any uh, DevOps uh, jobs. And uh, maybe it's even stronger for um, from a LinkedIn profile. But again, the first way that you will be uh, introduced to Encoban is either your CV or your LinkedIn. So 
if they, if even if you have a, a GitHub and you are not uh, displaying it in your CV or in your LinkedIn profile, maybe no one will ever uh, find out. So they, they are two different tools. One tool is to um, contact people and show your uh, background. And uh, the other tool is to keep your code and show your IT skills. Um, I think it's a really interesting question because um, before the whole lockdown, uh, I was at an event and I talked to two um, founders of a company, two women um who said um they're always looking for um new people like everyone in it i think a lot of um customer or like people are searching for new hires and they said um sometimes they the what what they are missing is uh, that people show them uh, why they want this specific job and it goes back to a bit what you said before no one wants to be like number three four five and have the feeling that you apply to a lot of things even if you do and what they told me that um, was that they are also looking for a new beginners like coding beginners it's not about being the best coder but it's about showing um, that you are willing to learn and that um, if you're new to coding and you maybe did some online classes and so on to get your skills started um, to show your passion, why this you're passionate about this, why you uh, think you're the right fit for the company, what drives you like um, maybe say something that you spend 24 hours at a hackathon because you were so passionate about this and this topic and this is what you created and then maybe send the link to github so that they can have a look at it it's not about or from what i understood from them it's not about being the best at what you do but being really passionate and i think it goes really well with your message as well and peter that you really have to show the people why you want it. Um, you can always learn new things. And especially, I think it's not even just in IT, but I mean, the IT industry is changing all the time. Um, I mean, since I started at Microsoft six years ago, so many things have changed at our company. I could not even have known this when I started at the company. So it's really about always learning and being interested and curious and passionate and telling the people why you're doing something or why you want something. And I think this can really be a game changer. Exactly, exactly. Because uh, you you go somewhere and maybe they work with uh, five different technologies. And in one year, because they will have GitHub, they will have Jira, they will have uh, a programming language, they will have different uh, text editors. You have many different technologies and mm. then you go to another company and let's say your uh, basic uh, knowledge is on Python, is on the same programming language, but all the, um, the other technologies can be different. Even sometimes companies can have their own desktops programming languages, technologies. So there is no way that you uh, could be prepared about them technologically uh, wise. But if they see that you have, that you are flexible to change among technologies, uh, try things out of your comfort zone and uh, experiment with different technologies and feel comfortable with, th with the fact that uh, you don't know Sometimes we don't know and we have to learn and you and so uh, that you are able to learn alone and you don't need a, a manager who will waste many hours of their time um, and their um, bigger salary on you just to show you the basics. You have to be able to learn alone. Even if you know one programming language and uh, in the next year you start working with a different version, on the same uh, programming language, you have to be able to work, to to know, to know, for example, uh, Stack Overflow and different um, uh, online sources where you can just go and quickly Google and understand what is the problem and how you can fix it. It's important yeah. to know everything, and you can't play this uh, card even if you are uh, 
a senior developer. You can't uh, go somewhere yeah. supporting that. Okay, I, I have a, that good experience in JavaScript that I know everything about it. Not even in Excel, you can do this. Because these uh, tools have so many parameters and different ways of uh, usage, mm -hmm. and they are constantly changing. So you, they have to see that you are open to learn and you are passionate about it. It's not that they will start training you and they will give you the time to feel familiar with uh, the business operations and the tools. And then in three, four months, you will find all of this overwhelming and you will leave. Yeah. So important for them to know that uh, you can take it and uh, be okay with it. Um, the other one, they are really cool with uh, giving you the time to learn. Maybe not in small startups, because there are a, a lot of things to do and uh, only a few people to do. And they usually hire more experienced uh, people. But in uh, big IT companies, I have seen that they really give you the time to adapt and learn and uh, they don't start with deadlines and assigning big projects and um, clients to you. Yeah, I also like uh, what Doris wrote in the chat. Um, she is having uh, one hour per week during work times um, just to learn something new. Um, so, for example, she said, I said uh, a very dramatic title so nobody um, dares to overbook. Um, and I think it's a really good idea to have uh, one hour. Um, most of the LinkedIn sessions are 30 minutes, so you have uh, time to be a bit late, find a course that you're interested in, then do the 30 minutes um, that you're interested in. Also, what I um, try to incorporate as many times as possible, and at least for me, it works um, quite well. Um, in the morning, when I get ready, even now, um, in the first hour of the day, I'm physically present, but not really mentally present. Let's say it like that. Um, but I realized that um, I, if I look for documentaries, like uh, 30 minutes documentaries on YouTube or something uh, about a topic that I'm interested in, doesn't have to be related to your job, but just something that you're interested in. Um, I listen to it while getting ready, brushing my teeth, drinking my first coffee, and I take so many things unconsciously with me that I can then either incorporate in an interesting conversation with a person I meet or just something like um, to learn something new as well. And at least this for me um, works quite well because I don't have to consciously do something in this first hour but I can still learn something and take something away. I think that there are two uh, ways to start building your uh, confidence and learning thing. Uh, one is from your inner circle, be a specialist on a technology and feel comfortable with that and start expanding your knowledge on the field. And uh, the other way is to start understanding how the process is uh, working how other professionals are working, talk with them, uh, collaborate, and then become an expertise in your uh, area. And uh, I'm afraid that most of the times we start from the inner circle mm -hmm. and we're afraid that, okay, I'm not good enough on this technology, so it doesn't matter to build my interpersonal uh, personal skills because they will not hire me anyway, and I have to get this uh, right. And we, we lose the whole point. And the point is that there is a lot of work in IT. They need people. They need people who they can trust and understand that they will um, bring value to their uh, company. And that all of these things uh, can be studied. Uh, so you can learn everything. You can really learn everything. In a few months, there are so many uh, online courses, uh, articles that you can read, uh, learn on a job. So I think that if we overcome the obstacle of the beginning and how to start and go out there and claim that, okay, maybe I don't know much, but I want to, and I'm really passionate about technology and uh, I want to bring um, uh, the best uh, in your company. 
uh, we, we gain uh, the trust of the other person to at least listen to us, which is the first uh, step. Yeah. I also, um, like, how is it that your company now, um, do you get time? Um, because Susanna, for example, wrote, uh, we have to write to 10 hours per month. Um, which I think is cool. Um, they have a corporate license for LinkedIn Learning. Um, we also get LinkedIn Learning from the company, for example, and we are actually advised um, to regularly keep learning. So when you um, start in a, in a role at Microsoft, you get an online learning guide um, with different courses. Um, for example, I'm um, now in solution sales, so there are some um, content related, technology related courses that I have to take. Um, some are about um, sales, how to like um, talk to the customers and so on. And I really have like a learning um, journey that I need to finish until the end of our fiscal year, which I think is really good because um, and we also discussed this in the chat many times. You don't take the time for it and you kind of um, as uh, Story said, um, you stress to each other meeting, but you don't take the time to learning because you always think I can overbook it or I can do it later. I will do it on Fridays. Uh, Friday afternoon is the perfect time. No. Um, and I think it's really good. At least it helps me to have a deadline also internally where I know my manager will challenge me if I did the trainings or not. Um, so that I can really keep the, the importance and really keep the times also for learning in my calendar. And I will definitely try the one hour per week. Um, I tried it with my pipe hygiene, so I didn't work. <laughs> but I will try it with the learning part. <laughs> I think it's also important to um, be interested uh, genuinely in these uh, things. So, for example, I was, especially in the first uh, year, um, very hungry to learn more and I was pressing my manager to give me more. I was like, okay, what can I do in order to uh, Im improve um, my writing skills and learn how to write reports and all of these little jobs that uh, seem to be maybe boring for someone, but uh, you, when you are a beginner, you have to learn. And there is um, not a better way uh, to learn than actually doing a, a project. Um, now to a more uh, senior uh, position, uh, I see that they trust me that I know how to uh, learn and how to find things. They just come with a list of technologies to me and they're like, okay, we're going to work with this in the same uh, project. And uh, I go back to Udemy, Udacity, try for um, go for online courses, try to find related projects, a lot of stack order flow. Um, and then small articles in order to learn because and also it helped me a lot to create content for uh, YouTube because what I found challenging there was to um, explain a concept in a few words mm. and I, only when you really try to put it down in a very simple words you are uh, able to understand something uh, and think that customers are not always uh, technical people they're more business people so you have to um, be able to understand the concept that well so that you can give it in a few uh, sentences so did you start your YouTube channel um, to build your professional brand and like to? Yeah. Um, I started because I I had automated um, automated recorded interviews and I found it very scary to do because an automated uh, recorded interview is where the uh, camera opens. Uh, you see a question and then you have um, a specific time to answer to this question yeah. and then this is recorded and you can't uh, try it again so it was uh, very scary uh, because i hadn't uh, done anything similar and i found it very challenging and usually when i find something uh, tricky i i insist 
on this. For example, I was af afraid of uh, electromagnetic fields and I did two dissertations on it, just to take it out of uh, the way as a challenge. So I started this uh, challenge in order to, this uh, channel in order to uh, feel more comfortable with me uh, speaking in front of an audience. And that's why I, um, I try to participate more in uh, lives like this and um, uh, talk about uh, my experience. Cool. I really like that, um, that you kind of take your fears and just try to work on them. And I think that many times if you actually then do something that scares you, you realize that it's not that bad. And then the next time you feel more confident. And also Susanna wrote something um, very interesting, which um, I, I think is a really good tip. Um, she did, uh, she, uh, she applied for a job that required a specific CMS system, uh, which she didn't know. And she simply did, uh, took some courses on LinkedIn to actually get ready for the interview and feel confident. And I realized that, that it also helps me um, when I speaking to customers, um, always before meeting with a customer, I check out their uh, website, uh, their news pages, if there are any news articles. And then you have uh, this kind of introduction that you can start with. And it helps me to feel more confident than in the rest of the conversation because you already have the door opener. Um, and, and then the, the conversation flows easier, I think. Yes, the beginning is uh, always uh, the most difficult part. But I, I have realized that it, it is a small uh, step between being afraid and not doing it to being afraid, the, uh, afraid of it and doing it anyway. So you will be afraid, but you can just do it. And then with um, more experiences, you just feel more comfortable. And you see behind and you're like, OK, it worked for 10 more times. So it will work uh, uh, for now as well. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a good tip because um, I read a quote once saying that more people um, don't get where they want because they don't try than people who fail at trying to. So I think um, if we always wait for the moment that we are perfect at anything, we won't get anywhere anyway. And I think people are not looking for the perfect candidate um, in terms of knowledge, but the perfect candidate who dares to take on things that uh, they don't know. And um, I really liked what you said before. Um, there won't be a manager standing next to you saying this now is the next thing you have to do and now this and now this like in school or anything. It, I think in job environment, you always will be faced with things that you don't know yet and you just have to have the confidence that you know you can get through it. And I think that's much more important if you can show this to a recruiter or um, a potential manager that you don't need to be taken by the hand, but you can actually act on your own and learn something on your own because then they know that they will have a, an employee who can actually work their way through any situation. And it shows, you, it shows you that you are uh, also confident to apply for a job that uh, maybe you don't have all of the uh, skills, but you can learn your way around of uh, talking about the topic. For example, when I shift from uh, data science to machine learning, I, I didn't have uh, much experience on machine learning projects. I had done a few uh, courses, but then I, I knew what is it about what we are trying to do in this uh, area. Um, a few uh, famous uh, algorithms and uh, the, the whole uh, process of how to work your data and uh, train your algorithm. So that was enough to find uh, me a job in uh, machine learning. Uh, it's not that you will go there and impress them with the little details and show how well um, uh, you have read everything. Mm. More the uh, attitude. Think. Yeah, that's true. All right, um, as we are at 6.30, exactly, are there any other questions? Um, otherwise, I would say we will wrap it up for today. 
Um, please really um, let's stay connected on LinkedIn. Um, we have the LinkedIn group. If you're not part of it yet, um, you can just um, send me an email. I will also post um, our email address in the chat, um, the new IT girls at outlook.com. So just send me an email if you want to be part of it. I can send you the link. Uh, if you don't find it on LinkedIn, I would really be glad if we could keep the exchange um, because I think there are some really interesting topics still um, open and I could go on asking you questions, <laughs> Peter, for an hour. Um, but let's just move it to LinkedIn, maybe um, post links there if you have interesting things. I think Christina said that um, she has some tips about how to keep track of your um, contacts with an add-in for your browser, for example. I think those things are exactly what makes us um, more effective and stronger. And um, I know that every one of us has a lot of um, experience. So please share it and I'm sure we can all learn from each other. Galinda is asking where we'll find the recording. Um, I think we will either send it out um, if that works um, via um, meetup or we will post it in the LinkedIn group depending on the size, I think. <laughs> all right, then thanks a lot again fiscally for the sponsoring of the event. It was super interesting to get to know the company a bit more. Also great to see that you already have 25% of women. Um, I saw that there were some people asking about a DevOps job, so maybe that's a fit. Um, I would say just be brave, just talk to Galinda. I'm sure she's happy to um, take on any questions that you might have. And thank you, Elpida, for um, your tips about the LinkedIn profile. I took a lot of things with me um, that I will try to implement even more and um, happy to keep the conversation up. Thank you very much, everyone. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you also Bye. from me. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you, Galinda. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, girls.